Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we set out to describe the indescribable, to portray the unportrayable, and finally to find the indefinite. In short, we present Percy. Usher, where is the witness, Percy? Me lord, the witness in question seems not to be present in court. It's without leave, no doubt. Most irregular. We do have the two pillars of Percy, Orchidens and Orient Orient Esque. Call them. Call Orchidens. Call Orchidens. Call Orchidens. Call Orchidens. Call Orchidens. Call Ori Orient. Orients will do, Usher. Call Orients. Call Orients. Call Orients. Call Orients. Call Orients. and Orients, take your places in the witness box. Milord. Milord. This judicial investigation into the origins and character of the so-called Percy is being made extremely difficult by the unauthorized absence of the principal witness. Where is he? Where is he, Occidents? I don't know. You saw him go. It was your watch. I was just down in the mess getting supper. You never were. I was. You weren't. Do speak up, you two. Where is Percy? We don't know, Your Honour. Who is he then? He's a seahorse. No, he's not. He's a purse. Bet you don't know what type of sunglasses he wears. That's easy. Purse specs. Now your turn. Describe Percy in boots. Um. A persuader. Percent? Something to do with money. Percy collecting his FMA. What does he wear when he goes out to dinner? A pursuit. Perspicacity. That's naughty. Percy with piles. I, I've got one. Perseverance. Orions? Um, afraid not. I'm afraid we don't know that one, Your Honour. Percy chasing a bird. Get it? Perseverance. Oh, well, something like that. Very good, Your Honour. Thank you, Usher. In these two Ockidems and Orions, we see two minds, poles apart. It's true that our interests are normally diametrically opposite, but tonight we combine to lead the search and bring together some of the interesting characters who combine Percy's people. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Have you seen Percy around? No. He said he'd play drums for me tonight, but he's so unreliable. He's very popular, though. Now takes it back, doesn't it, Orions? Hard to think. We've, we've been together since 1933. The two of us and Percy. 
There have been some hard times and some good times. That's a question, isn't it, Occidents? I don't know the answer. Percy's an, an enigma. He's a bit of all of us, really. Al and the band, Bill and Jan Crump, Billy Mac. Billy, do you know who Percy is? No, but I do know a song. I danced in the morning when the earth was begun. Danced beneath the moon, the stars and the sun. It came down from heaven and I danced on earth. Dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I lead you all wherever you may be. next in this so-called running order. It's all right, Jan. I do realise that Percy is the burning question. Occidens and Oriens are having no success at all. What we need is someone with intuition and vision. The very chap, Colin Pomeroy, 203 Squadron's ornithologist, complete with high-powered binoculars and rucksack. You look particularly happy. Just found a rare bird in the garden. No, it's not that. I've just been sitting out on the airfield watching a lesser Mongolian sand plover and thinking of things ornithological, and it came to me. I've just found out why hummingbirds hum. Why, why do hummingbirds hum, then? They can't remember the words. Oh, remarkable. Tell me, Colin, have you seen Percy? Not since the last squadron party, and I didn't get there until nearly two o'clock as Crew 2 had been specially selected to take the Sasso to Cyprus... OK, and... OK. Cut out the commercials for Crew 2, or I'll threaten you with a day on Thulfo with the Assistant Deputy Vice to Pi R squared, brackets MH20, subdivision weapons, tack. Thulfo! Now that's an idea. Percy might be sheltering on that hostile crag of precipitous rock that stands proud of the blue Mediterranean off the Maltese coastline. Why, I remember on my last visit to Filfla, sitting there as the sun settled slowly in the west, and the wind whispered gently around my hazelbad, watching an immature chestnut-bellied sandgrouse feeding on a prickly pear. Amazing! Incredulous! Never seen in Malta before, you know, although I've seen them on many occasions at Mazira, flying sedately across the desert sands between the camels and the BFBS Mazira radio masts, with a backdrop of scintillating scenery and beauty. I'm well acquainted with Mazira. I remember on oh, another... Oh, thank you, attack. thank you. Another time. Five o'clock run, maybe. 
But we have to locate Percy. Were there any signs of his using Thorfler when you were last out there? Not exactly. We glided across a mirror-like ocean, Charonesque boatmen skippering the PSI Lutsu with incredible skill, searching the horizon for signs of thick-kneed Senegals, when, unfortunately, I caught sight of a bimaculated lark, tripped over the lunch boxes, and dropped the station PRO's camera and tape recorder to the bottom of the filth of the channel. They floated for a couple of minutes, but I couldn't retrieve them as I had to write down the field details of the bimaculated lark. And by the time I'd finished that, they disappeared. Poor old Pommers. What happened then? Well, I got Maritime Frank to help. The Sub Aqua Club carried out a dive in the area on the next morning. Did they find them? No, but we did get back 2,435 empty chist bottles. You mustn't say that on the air. It's appetising. And you've upset the band. All right, lads. If you play another number, Colin and I will go across to the Naffy and cash in the empties for a full crate. Come along, Colin. Do you know, Graham, only last week I saw a double-breasted, red-spotted flycatcher in full breeding plumage selecting a nesting site in a 13 squadron camera. Wait, what about using your ringing nest to try and catch Percy? He's not a flying fish, is he? Yes. Who's there? Two or three. Sounds like more than that to me. I make the jokes, madam. This is no joke, I can tell you, dearie. I've got this thing in my bathroom, and I think it's yours. Ours, madam? In your bathroom? Yes, yours. It's a green un. No legs, no arms, and a crinkly bag. Nasty red poppy eyes and flaring nostrils. Gave me a turn, I can tell you. It's Percy, Orient. We found him. I knew it was yours. Nobody else on the island would have such a horrible thing. You'd better come round and collect him quickly, or I'll pull a chain. Immediately, madam. Ockidens and Orient are on their way. Yes? Uh, I'm Ockidens, and here's Orient. That's nice. We, we, we've come for Percy. Sorry, you're too late. He's been collected. Nice young man came round for him. Pilot. Said he was from 13 Squadron. Lovely camera he had with him. Cruel Joe Cot. The Pentax pilot. Get on the radio, Orions. Tell Base we've got a major emergency on our hands. Regal Ops, Regal Ops. This is Mobile. Stand by to copy flash message. This is King speaking. Pass your message. Roger, sir. Ockidens here. Percy's been kidnapped. 13 Squadron. Cruel Joe Cop picked him up at 1930 hours in downtown Patchville. Present location unknown. Awaiting your instructions. Over. All stations. All stations. This is the King speaking. 203 Squadron to red, white and blue alert. Launch the search and rescue. A flight to immediate readiness. B flight, get your heads down and rest. 
This is war. Welcome to the nerve center of 203 Squadron. Here at ground flight, the lads are determined to rescue the abducted Percy, even if it means missing a station armory guard duty. The engine men have downed their darts, the radar fitters have hung up their hammers, the armorers have finished their sandwiches, and the engineering officers have let go of their pencils. Yes, we really mean business here on ground flight. I am personally directing operations here, Flight Lieutenant Graham Stevens, engineer, raconteur, leader of men and folk singers, and an international debutante. I have the intellect of a dozen elephants and the strength of an Einstein. No, sir, I, I, I'm sure that's wrong. Oh, you're right, Flight Sergeant, it should only be one elephant. Now, what's holding up that aircraft? They must get off and look for Percy. It's getting late, and if it goes on much longer, it will get even later. How perspicacious of you, sir. But it's Flight Lieutenant Raymond and his crew six. They'll lock themselves inside the Nimrod again. Oh, why don't they just get airborne then? They're just sitting there, laughing hysterically and singing, we shall not be moved. Oh, don't worry, Flight Sergeant. Their nerve will crack in about nine hours' time. What makes you so sore of that? Well, I happen to have done a study of parapsychotic, transvestite, analytic, geriatric, heretic Nimrod crews operating under claustrophobic, hemorrhoidal environmental parameters. And I have calculated that they will be out of that aircraft in eight hours, 57 minutes, and 29 seconds. Besides, that's when the food runs out. Oh, sir, you are clever. I know, Flight Sergeant, I know. <coughs> that's the squadron commander. He drives around the aircraft park every day looking for pieces of rubbish that could seriously damage one of his valuable aircraft. He follows the same route every day and always manages to find a few bits of clutch and brake linings from a Ford Escort. What incredible eyesight. What devotion to duty. What terrible driving. Uh, if you're listening, sir, this is Ken Harvey imitating my voice. Now, Flight Sergeant, just in case he comes in here, get that chap to put down his book about the historic and bloody battles of Saxon times. Funny how popular Saxon violence is on 203 Squadron. We're reaching fever pitch down here on ground flight now. We're all exhausted, but we'll carry on. The same question is on everybody's lips. Where the f*** was that f*** Percy? Where is Percy? What is he? We're all worried tonight. about Percy. I went over to Cornwall to look for him. Didn't find Percy. But it did come across this Chinese nose flute. A what? A Chinese nose flute. Oh, come on then, let's hear it. Have you not seen one of these before? No. Right, here we go then. Hang on. <laughs> oh, my God, what are you I, doing? I'll use my right nostril. Will that be all right? Yeah, OK, stand, then. Stand by. Look out over there. Here we go then. Oh, 
dear. I'm not so sure about that, are you? I don't know. It wasn't bad. Hey, let's let's try a penny whistle, honey. Oh, go that, on then. That would be All right. Shall we try um, mechanical blackbird? Hey. Right. Right. Let's have a go at this one. Yes. Are you the people who are doing nothing but talk about your purses? Yes, madam. There is only one, though. I don't wish to go into sordid details. I think the whole thing is despicable and disgusting. Who, who is that speaking, please? White House. Oh, Mary. What can I say to you? Uh, we just didn't imagine that we could have caused any offence. It didn't occur to us. I am offended. I suppose it was that film. Look, Mrs. Whitehouse, we do have our legal adviser here. I'll get him to speak to you. Uh, madam, I am a judge and am responsible for this radiophonic inquiry and search for Percy. There you go again. Even a judge saying it. You all need to go and take a cold shower. You're quite right, madam. We shall all join Mr. Gene Kelly singing in the rain. Perhaps you'd care to take your clothes off and join us, Mary. Oh! I've been thinking, hockey dents. Hope it didn't hurt too much. That's not nice. I think we're being silly, rushing around looking for Percy like this. I mean, what are that lot across the runway going to do with Percy? He's ours. He's part of 203. Percy won't stay with that cruel Joe Cotton and his bunch of cranberries. If we just wait for him, he'll be back. I hope he makes it soon. It's getting very lonely sitting down here with just a white space above us. Don't get depressed, hockey dents. I know he'll be back soon. As long as we keep our spirits up, you know Percy's got no time for moaners. Here's Dick Yates. He always tickles me. Ach, please, Daddy, won't you take us to the drive-in? All six, seven of us, eight, nine, ten. We want to see a flick about Tarzan and the Ipe Men And when the show is over you can bring us back again Popcorn, chewing gum, peanuts and bubble gum Ice cream, candy floss and Eskimo pie Ach, Daddy, are we miss nickels and the Kurdish Pepsi Cola, ginger beer and Canada Dry Daddy, won't you take us to the fun fair? We want to have a ride on the bumper cars. We'll buy a stick of candy floss and eat it on the octopus. And then we'll take a rocket chip that goes to Mars. Popcorn, chewing gum, peanuts and bubble gum. Ice cream, candy floss and Eskimo pie. Ach, Daddy, are we miss nickels and the Kurdish? Pepsi Cola, ginger beer and Canada Dry. Ach, please, Daddy, won't you take us off to Durban? It's only eight hours in the Chevrolet. There's lots of sea and sand and sun and fish in the aquarium. It's a lucky place for a holiday. Popcorn, chewing gum, peanuts and bubble gum, ice cream, candy floss and Eskimo pie. Ach, Daddy, are we missing the balls and the Kurdish, Pepsi Cola, ginger beer and Canada Dry. Daddy, if I can't go to Biscope, we'll go off to Durban, life's a hell of a bore. 
thought you don't take us to the fix And what the hell else can we do But go and murder all the uggies next door Popcorn, chewing gum, peanuts and bubble gum Ice cream, candy floss and Eskimo pie Ach, daddy, owie, miss, nickels and licorice Pepsi, cola, ginger beer and Canada dry Ach, please, daddy, what's that? I like it, young man. Takes me back to the days on the colonial circuit. Are you feeling happier now, Occidents? Just, just a bit. Told you it work. Percy's a state of mind, Bill. Keep the wheels turning till he comes back to us. Right, here we are then. We all enjoy our song, did we? It's very good. Now, now we're going to get very serious now, and we're going to do something out of Richard Burton and Solange Olivier all rolled into one. So I'm going to do it now. No abuse, please. I'm church. I'm going to do now a small poem entitled A Visit from St. Nicholas. Nicholas. <laughs> T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the ass, not a creature was stirring, not even a mass. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. 
The children all nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced on their heads. And Mama and her kerchief, and me and my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter nap. When out on the lawn, there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw down the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster of midday to the objects below. When, what to my wondering eyes should I peer, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny deer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it was St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, the coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donda and Blitzen. <laughs> to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with optical, mount to the sky, so up to the house top the courses they flew, with sleighs full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, heard on the roof, a prancing and pouring of each little loof. And as I drew my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas come with a band. He dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, all dimples and merry. His cheeks were all like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as snow. The stump of a pipe he held in his tooth, and the smoke encircled his head like a reef. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed, just like a bowl of jelly. <laughs> he was chubby and plump, right a little old elf, and I laughed when I was swearing his bottom myself. I winked with his eye and a twist of his head, soon gave me to know I was nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, <laughs> but went straight to his work and fooled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, laying his finger the side of his nose. <laughs> He gave a nod and up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away it all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him explain, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all, good night. Happy, Happy Christmas! Christmas! Let's have another one. Let's have another one. Let's have a tune. So what tune do you have? Another song? What should we sing? Last thing on my mind. Or call Last it. thing on my mind. From Dick. Right. Last thing on my mind. From Dick. Go on, Dick. It's a lesson too late for the learning Made of science in the wink of an eye my soul is turning in your hand in your hand are you going away with no words of farewell will there be not a trace I should have loved you better, didn't mean to be unkind. You know that was the last thing on my mind. Here we go, here we go. As I wander, my thoughts are a tumbling round and round, round and round. Underneath our feet, the subways are rumbling underground, underground. Are you going away with no words of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? I should have loved you better. Oh, that.
make you laugh a little, entertain you, and attract your sympathy, since there are those who would put Percy down. It's even rumoured that he may be sent into oblivion in a year or two. However, we leave you with this thought. Percy is not one person, he is a frame of mind. He was born in the Persian Gulf in the 1930s, but years before that there were Percy's there was Percy Sampson, who founded the Fleet Air Arm. Percy Collinshaw, who introduced Percy's ancestors to the Royal Air Force. Even as today, there is Percy King, the latest Chief Seahorse. There is no one Percy, but Percy is a state of mind. He is an enigma. was unit call prepared and produced by 203 Squadron Royal Air Force.